Now, while Congress looks to reverse the FCC's decision to deregulate ISPs, many people uh, are looking towards city and state-run broadband networks to get their internet from. Now, uh, what they found, according to a new study from Harvard University, is that these uh, networks, these broadband networks, are not only cheaper, but are actually more transparent about their pricing. So that's very interesting. Uh, Now, researchers collected advertised prices for entry-level broadband plans, those meaning federal standard of at least 25 megabits per second download and 3 megabits per second upload speeds offered by 40 community-owned ISPs and compared them to advertised prices by private competitors. Now, the report by researchers at the Berkman Klein Center for Internet and Society at Harvard does not provide a complete picture of municipal versus private pricing, uh, but it, it tends to offer a pretty good picture of uh, the differences between tri- pricing when it comes to public and private. Now, the, the reason that they can't get a whole picture or a complete picture is because data about private ISP's prices are actually more difficult to get than information about municipal network pricing. So that shows that Again, municipal internet, they're upfront about their prices, while broadband uh, ISP companies are not. They're not straightforward with their prices. Now, in cases where researchers were able to compare municipal prices to private ISP, the city-run network almost always offered lower prices for similar service, by the way. Now, this should not be a surprise to people. Um city-run broadband or city-run anything will always be cheaper because there's not a profit motive attached to it. They don't have to worry about making uh, increasing their bottom line. They don't have to worry about paying executive bonuses or paying shareholders. So, of course, when you have something that is not for profit, it's going to have much lower overhead. This is the same situation that we have in healthcare and why our healthcare is more expensive than other countries that have single payer healthcare is because there's just less overhead. There is less waste. So, and, and look, when it comes to, a, I think, a valuable service such as healthcare or access to information, any overhead profit, I think, is considered waste. But that's just my opinion on that. Now, while internet, uh, provided by the city is not always cheaper, or I'm sorry, it's not always the fastest, sorry, but it usually is cheaper. Um, It actually also doesn't come with extra features. Now, that's where the market can come into play as a competitor, right? So think about it, right? So city-run internet or state-run internet uh, can provide basic packages for very, very cheap, right? Now, private companies with their profit motives and things like that, they can't touch those prices, but what they can do is they can offer faster speeds and extra incentives to try to vie for consumers, right? So you have some extra bells and whistles, a little bit extra speed, throw in some packages and things like that to justify your higher price. That's how it's supposed to work. That's how competition works, right? But what they're doing is that thanks to uh, the capture, I think, of the regulatory regime, um, so, you know, through lobbying and, and all that stuff, they've been able to basically capture local governments and as well as the federal government and say that, well, you can't regulate us. In fact, we need to be deregulated even more. And not only that, but we need to clamp down on uh, other, you know, competitors, things like municipal broadband. And that's what they do. Instead of going and, and, and justifying those prices with better service, and support, and more bells and whistles, no, they just buy up the government and use it to crush their competition. And when they eliminate that competition, they can get away with things like data caps, poor customer service. I mean, look, I I think I heard somewhere uh, that Comcast actually has the worst customer service of any company ever. So that's pretty terrible. Now, they're not the most hated company, uh, in the world, that distinctive pleasure goes to EA, which I absolutely agree with that assessment. Uh, EA is fucking terrible. Uh, but Comcast, I think, 
rates high on that list as well. No, but the reason that they can do that and have such piss poor service and customer service and high prices is because our internet companies, our ISVs, are in regional monopolies. So they have no incentive to innovate or do faster speeds or give good customer service. And that's actually why we not only need net neutrality, but we also need something to compete against those ISPs or to break them up. Now, there's more details from this study. They found that most community-owned uh, fiber-to-the-home networks, which is faster than DSL, faster than cable, all that stuff, actually charged less and offered prices that were clear and unchanging. Whereas private ISPs typically charge initial low promotional rates uh, that later uh, sharply rise, at usually after 12 months. They were able to make comparisons in 27 different communities. And they found that 23 cases, the community-owned FTTH provider's pricing was lower when averaged over four years. In the other 13 communities, comparisons were not possible, either because the private provider's website terms of service deterred or prohibited data collection, or because no competitor offered service that qualified as broadband. They also made an incidental finding that Comcast offered different prices and terms for the same services in different regions. So, now, I want to give you some numbers here on uh, how much cheaper municipal broadband for these FTTH networks actually are. And this is by the numbers. Prices for municipal ISPs were between 2.9 and 50% less than the lowest cost such service offered by a private provider or providers in that market. So, that's a wide range. 2.9% to 50%. In some cases, however, and, and this is, these are, I think, rare cases, a private provider service cost between 6.9 and 30.5% uh, 30 less. So again, there's a big disparity there. But in some cases, they actually did find that when you had competition, that private uh, prices actually dropped and were actually cheaper in some areas. Now, there's two examples um, that the report found about local municipal ISBs being far cheaper than their uh, big company counterparts. In Lafayette, Louisiana, for example, where the Lafayette utility system offered a 50% savings compared to KTC Pace and a 34.2% savings compared to Cox Cable. Now, of course, the municipal providers' prices were better, even though its entry-level broadband speeds were 60 megabit, uh, megabits per second down and 60 megabits per second up, which, understand, is an entry-level package. If you're doing gaming or, or streaming, uh, you might actually want a more expensive package, right? And that will actually cost you more. Now, the entry-level KTC Pace and Cox plans, however were actually far slower, 50, 50 megabits per second down and just 5 megabits per second upload. So here's a case where municipal broadband is both cheaper and better than a private company, than all their competitors. And uh, hopefully I say this right, Sebawang, Michigan, the municipal provider was 43.8% per, uh, cheaper than Comcast, despite offering faster speeds in the entry-level broadband tier. So you have a company that's nearly uh, or a uh, uh, municipally owned broadband that is almost 44% cheaper. Now, for example, if you pay about 50 bucks for internet, right, and your city opens up its own broadband provider uh, that charged 44% cheaper, well, you pay a lot less. It'd be somewhere around $27. And I'm not 100% on that math, but... That should be around what you pay. That's a big amount of savings. Not only did they beat Cox in Sebowang, but municipal providers beat the pricing of both of Comcast, Charter, Wave, and Mediacom in other cities. And so this, these results are why ISPs are scared shitless of city-run broadband and are now rushing politicians uh, with you know, and, and, and lobbying them relentlessly to kill uh, and ban 
these companies, these, these city-run municipal uh, uh, broadband providers. Now, the thing is, net neutrality, look, this is important, uh, not only in the terms of net neutrality, but when it comes to America's far, far overpriced internet, right? In a world without net neutrality, with all these regional monopolies, local uh, broadband, that is the only thing I think that's actually going to uh, not only fight back against you know, throttling and, and blocking and, and paid uh, fast lanes, but also it's going to allow uh, competition in these markets. So what we have to do as citizens is we have to get more involved, right? So, for example, if your city or, or your town or, or, or your state wants to open up municipal broadband, then support it. If your city or state or whatever tries to ban it, get involved and vote in politicians who actually care about this issue and actually want to make sure that you have the option of getting municipal broadband. We've got to do something to fight against the ISPs and to make sure that they're actually doing a service, that they're actually doing what they're supposed to do, uh, and that is serve the customer base and not just their shareholders or their executives. And I think that's the only way that we're going to be able to fight against a, a corporate takeover of the Internet. So while it is nice that Congress is working on a way to restore net neutrality, it won't solve the original problem of regional monopolies. And I think this broadband, this local broadband, this is the way to do it. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.